Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today I'm at Holmes Honda here in Shreveport, Louisiana. We're gonna take a look at this 2022 Honda Accord Sport Special Edition. The exterior color on this model is one of the more popular colors among Honda buyers, which is Sonic Gray. And being that this is the Sport Special Edition, it's going to slot in just under the highest trim level, which is going to be the Touring trim level. A very nice looking car. So no matter what you are planning to do, whether you're gonna buy a 2021, 2022, wait for 2023, whatever you're going to do with these Accords, you can't really lose, period. A lot of great features here. As you can see right here, down on the lower portion of the bumper, you're going to see that box right there. That's Honda Sensing Lane Keep Assist, Road Departure Mitigation, Lane Keeping Assist System. All those great features that are here to help out keeping driver and passengers safe. You can see that I have the turn signals turned on. Very nice looking headlight housing. Overall, just the way the headlights look, the way they're angled back, that really gives it a nice look. LED daytime running lights. And here on the lower portion of the front bumper, the LED fog lights. One thing that I know is a popular question because of what people obviously like on any of these cars is are there turn signal indicators built in not here these are manual folding mirrors but i do like that black gloss black i should say on the mirrors giving it a very nice look these are heated power side view mirrors power adjustable and they are heated 235 40 is the size of the tires wrapped around the 19 inch alloy wheel and here under the hood is going to be the turbocharged direct injection 1.5 liter four cylinder. It makes 192 horsepower and it puts power to the ground via front wheel drive through the CVT or continuously variable single speed transmission. And MPGs come in at 29 miles per gallon city, 35 out on the highway, a combined total of 32. And if you're careful, as much fun as these Accords are to drive, I don't know that I could achieve this or not, but according to Honda, you can use 3.1 gallons of gas per every 100 miles you drive. And let's address two commonly asked questions. Number one, does the remote have remote start built in? As you can see down there on the bottom left-hand corner, the answer is yes to that question. And another question, not asked quite as often as remote start, but what is the percentage of tint on these windows? Which, by the way, this is not factory tint. Holmes Honda actually adds this right here at the dealership. So, on the front windows, 40%. On these side windows, 25%. On the rear, it's going to be 12%. And if you're not familiar with what those numbers mean, that percentage is the percentage of light that the tent allows into the interior. And something you will find here that I really like is that you have the accent colors of black with things such as the rear spoiler here on the trunk, also with the shark fin antenna up there. And as you really already saw, you also have the same thing with the surround or the bezels on the front fog lights. 16.7 cubic feet of cargo space. Kind of show you what's around here in the interior. If you want to maximize that cargo space, here are the two levers that you're going to pull on and then you're going to hop into the interior or walk over here to the interior. Hopping inside might make this kind of hard to do. There's how you're gonna maximize your cargo space on both sides. And just a quick look at the door bins. Not the largest, but I like the fact that you have this area open right here. So that does kind of increase the size of a bottle or container of whatever you can put in there as far as its height goes, so that does help. Find the map pockets on both rear seats. And this is the time to hop in. You don't have the air conditioning vents here on the rear of the console, but in an interior of this size, I don't think that's an issue. Space right here for a cell phone or whatever, maybe two cell phones and two USB ports for rear seat passengers. And let's take a look in through the passenger side door just to show you what's here. Obviously, you can see the size of the door bin, not much different than what we had in the rear, but you do have dual heated seats here in the front, leather trim for the driver and passenger, and both are heated. Now on the passenger side here, this is a four-way power adjustable seat. On the driver's side, it's a 12-way, so quite an addition there for 
adjustability for the driver to find their comfort spot. And as you can see, typical size here for the glove box, but no size or space sacrifice there. Here's the multitasking lid for the center console. It doubles as an armrest. And when we take a look inside, let's remove this tray. You can leave that in there or take it out depending on what you want to do. You will see that there is a reasonable amount of space. Looking in through the driver's side door, the ultimate nerve center of the Accord. As you can see, here is the adjustment for the power side view mirrors right there. You're just going to move that switch at the top to the left or the right to make adjustments and you're not using it. You can just keep it in that neutral position in the center if you want to open the rear trunk or the only trunk. Not just rear, but the trunk. <laughs> There's the button to do that right there. And then you do have an adjustable steering wheel tilt and telescopically there is the release to make that functionality work. We'll hop inside and hit the push button start. You can hear the chime that lets you know that you are in an accord and I'll show you the instrument cluster graphics. There are no changes for 2022. That's not a bad thing, but you still have a great looking instrument cluster easy to use, a lot of good functionality and information found here, and even speed limit recognition right there with the speed limit sign above the digital speedometer. Steering wheel mounted controls, everything easy to figure out. I don't necessarily need to tell you about all of that, but you do have the paddle shifters right here on the steering wheel kind of mimicking going through multiple speeds in the transmission, even though you only have one speed here. And something that was interesting with the Honda Ridgeline for 2021, a knob was returned to the interior to control the volume of the radio and turn that on and off. That's never gone away here, but obviously it is here on the Accord. And something that I really like to point out here, this is one of the easiest to use infotainment systems found in the industry. And while you don't see Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it does have the integration capabilities for that. And we'll just take a look here at what the settings are. A lot of different things you can go through here. I'm not going to go through every single one, but just so you can see what's here, we'll take a quick look around. And a multi-view rear camera. You've got three different views depending on what you want to see, what you're backing up to. There are the trajectory lines. And then view number two and view number three. Kind of looking down if you're backing up to something uh, and you're really thinking, how close am I to that? Am I going to hit it? Where's the curb? That kind of thing. I realize that you don't necessarily need that, but it is helpful if you do. And you have dual zone climate control. You can sync or unsync that if you want to. If you want to have everything set the same with just turning one knob, well, there you go. As far as that goes, fan speed in the middle. Pretty easy to figure out. And there's more connectivity here with the 12 volt power outlet. If I can get my hand in there around the shifter and dual USB ports. Now you don't have wireless charging here, but that is an available option. If you want to conceal all of that away, well, there you go. And the shifter, I think a lot of you are going to be happy that there is not a push button shifter here. So a good thing, there's the cup holders and there are multiple driving modes. You have your normal mode. And then when you go into econ mode, you're going to see the change there on the left hand side. It's going to say econ, but you'll still have the white surround on the instrument cluster, that's going to change to red when you go into sport mode because it's more exciting than just turning it green, right? <laughs> but if you want to use that, obviously you can. And then you can turn the auto stop start feature off if you wish to. You also have the power parking brake and brake hold mode. When that's activated, if you're not familiar with what that is, that means that you can come to a complete stop and then take your foot off the brake. The brakes will lock until you touch the gas pedal again. Okay, as we hop out onto the road for our test drive, let's try something that I don't always do, but I need to start doing this more often. Let's try every single driving mode and see what the differences are, at least as best as I can convey that to you. It's always best for you to get your hands wrapped around the leather wrapped steering wheel and put your foot on the gas pedal, but as I cruise on down the road here, the acceleration is good in just the base regular driving mode. When you go into econ mode, you definitely will notice a difference. The RPMs don't go as high. They definitely don't go as high as fast. So that's going to make a difference. That's where I am right now. 
And for some people, that may be the right place to be, depending on what your needs and or desires are. But let's change the colors from white to red on the dashboard and try sport mode because I can definitely tell you right now that sport mode will not let you down when it comes to having a good time and getting down the road as quickly as possible. In fact, it really makes a big difference. Of course, going from econ mode to sport mode, obviously that's going to be a noticeable change because you go from the least capabilities to the most capabilities when it comes to driving modes. So what about the overall driving experience? Well, the handling is sure great. The ride quality is good. It's not uncomfortable, that's for sure. The seats themselves are nice and comfortable. There's a lot of room within the interior and a lot of adjustability. I already talked about how you have a 12-way adjustable driver's seat and then the four-way adjustable power passenger seat, both being power, both being heated. You do have ventilated seats available from Honda, but that's not going to be found here on this particular model. We'll go ahead and accelerate down the road here a little bit. But overall, I always have to give high marks to these Accords. Honda has done a great job with these Honda Accords. No matter what trim level you get, they ride well, they drive well, they have the capability with either engine option to accelerate with absolutely no problem. Obviously, if you want the most out of the dropping the pedal to the floor experience, well, the 2.0T turbocharged 2 liter at 252 horsepower is the direction you will want to go. But at 192 horsepower out of this 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, this Accord still has no problem getting down the road and accelerating up to highway speeds, whatever you need to do, it has no problem. So tell me down in the comments section, do you plan to buy a 2022 Honda Accord? If so, what trim level, what interior and exterior colors do you prefer? And obviously what engine do you want under the hood? I have to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this Accord for the day. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you for giving me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, check out another of the videos that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.